Roderick, who's here in studio in person once again. It's Hall of Famer Rod Woodson. How are you, Roderick? I'm doing good. Good to see you back here. Uh, while we were uh, chatting with Tom Brady, Ryan Mallett, his backup, was named the new starting quarterback of the Houston Texans. Oh, is that right? That is correct. Am I breaking news with you right now, Rod? I did not see that. It didn't ring on my phone. Man. I had my phone on silent. Texans have to it. do it, man. They uh, did. They're four I mean, and five. They're on a bye week. We've already seen what Ryan Fitzpatrick can do for nine games here. There are several teams, I believe, in the league that should have took that trade. I mean, they could have sent that sixth rounder, seventh rounder to New England for, for Mallet. Mallet. Yeah. He's learned under Tom Brady for three years. I mean, that's. We see what Hoyer's doing school. in Cleveland. That's I mean, a good school. A Hoyer Brady Absolutely. backup's doing very well in Cleveland right now. He's doing We're going to see tremendous. him tomorrow night. Uh, Devin Still uh, joined us earlier on the program. His uh, daughter battling cancer. She's coming to the game tomorrow night. That is going to be something else it is. to see Devin Still out. It's there. a great story. I'm mean, just think uh, this little girl's galvanized the National Football League. We know about her illness, we know about the cancer, but the way it's brought the league together, and you know, you always think the league as every team is against each other. They don't like the other team, they don't like the players. If you don't put my jersey on, you don't wear my helmet, you're not in my building, we don't want to be a part of you. And we've seen different. We've seen them going to New England and what New England did for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just what the Brown family and Marvin Lewis and that staff has done for him and his family. I think it's a great story. I think it's great to see the league coming together as a whole. Yeah, Rod Woodson here in studio. Ryan in Cincinnati on the phone. You're on the Rich Eisen Show. Ryan? Hi, Rich. Uh, big fan of the show. I just Thank you. wanted to comment on uh, Devin Still. I'm actually a 30-year-old with a pediatric form of cancer. I've been battling off and on for the last four years, unfortunately on again right now. But I just wanted to say how proud I am. Uh, to be a Bengals fan and to be a Devin Still fan for the awareness and money he's raised, um, it's incredible. Um, I actually get all my treatments at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, which is, I think, the beneficiary of um, most of the fundraising. And, uh, again, I just, I'm just i so proud of to be a Bengals fan. We haven't had a lot to be proud of over the last 25 <laughs> years, but uh, that's one thing I'm certainly very, very proud of. Well, Ryan, what, what has it been like for you to see uh, Leah go through this and uh, what you're – what you're experiencing. I mean, it, it's just good that it's great that all the awareness she's getting. I mean, people like me and there's tons of hundreds of other kids in the hospital and any given time going through the same thing. And, you know, that their story is not really being told, but for Leah's story to be told, everyone can see and kind of relate to me now. They know what I'm going through, what my family's going through and the families of all these other children. It's just great. Well, it's Ryan, I, I hope you win this battle in, in short order. Look, look forward I appreciate to, that, Rich. Look forward to you calling me back and telling me you're 100% cancer-free. Will do, Rich. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate That's uh, Ryan in Cincinnati on the Rich Eisen Show. What, what did, yeah, I know you know Marvin very well, obviously. You won a Super yeah. Bowl together. Um, and he, he's, he put still on the practice squad so he can keep his health care. And I, 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 I love the story. I love what they came together as a whole right. to decide. But I, I think what we see here is that you know, I lost two good friends from leukemia when I was a kid. And what happens is that they don't have a platform. And then when something like this happens to Leah, his daughter, uh, Devin's daughter, uh, it comes to the forefront because he's in a, he has a platform to speak out. And uh, the media's around it, the league's around it, and it's brought awareness to, you know, that, that, that cancer, and it's a great thing. Yeah, and Devin still is going to be, and his daughter's going to be up there. Yeah. That's, that's the going to be nice. I, he's going to. He's, how's he going to be gonna, able to keep it together? He's going to he's going to ball out tomorrow night. Oh yeah, he's yeah. going to ball out. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, and uh, then you got the Bengals in a bit, and this is a big game. Who this thought game. the Cleveland Browns would be five and three? Did you? No. Five and three with Pettin and 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 few weapons. But I for, did like Hoyer. Well, because the whole off season, I, I, I liked Hoyer. You got to remember, last year Hoyer was throwing the ball extremely well. Yeah, Ford he blew out his knee on Thursday night football. He got hurt, and now he's, the Bills. he's playing well again. Yeah. Rod Woodson, Hall of Famer, is here in studio. The Farrelly brothers are coming here. Those guys are funny. They are funny guys. How do you have that many ideas in your head? Did you ask them? They're, they're probably back there right now. Did you ask them? I did see them back there. I had, haven't got to ask them that yet. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break. You've got a few minutes because you're here the whole I'll show. I'm going to run back there now. You're all the show. And, uh, and the Farrelly brothers, we got a trick up our sleeve for them. Yeah, when don't, yeah, don't, I know you know it. Don't, don't say it, Rob. I Wilson. won't say it. I will hold out. Stay tuned. Two more hours of the Rich Eisen Show is still to come. Oh.
Football Hall of Famer Rod Woodson rejoins the program here for all three hours. That was fun. The Farrelly brothers. You got a they chance are, to chat with them? I did. Yeah, we're, we're good people. Yeah, they are good people. What do you yeah. think of the rule change that Peter threw out there? That is a really good idea. Because I mean, I've never thought of it like that because I'm just thinking about all the rules that's been in place. You're always kind of halfway back. That's a really good idea. Because Moving it back the other way to making it a true 10 yard penalty. A true 10 yard penalty. That is a Instead great idea. Instead of half the distance to the goal, move it the full distance they won't away do, from they the won't goal. They won't do it. Because it would keep too many teams from being able to no, get out of the red zone. Their sense. own red zone? Their own 20? No, it, makes, I just, it makes too much sense. Because it makes too much <laughs> sense. And I know you I, definitely. It's a great rule, but I, I just don't think they'll do it. I know you also would agree with Bobby Farrelly when he says there's too many flags being thrown in the game. Right oh, now. it's a flag fest. If you want to go to a flag fest, you go to an NFL game. Wow, right. And it costs more than a beer fest. Well, I, <laughs> because, you know, I, I, I don't see them ever pumping the brakes on this. I've asked so many people involved with the competition committee, is there any sense from the club level, coaching level, management level, to pump the brakes on these rule changes that make, as Warren Sapp says, an autobahn between the numbers on an NFL field. I, ne I hear yeah. nobody saying, you know what, this is too much. We're going to need to pump the brakes a little bit. And it hasn't been that many rule changes this year. It's just the emphasis on the old rules. That's the key. Mm -hmm. They're emphasizing, though, shouldn't you just emphasize every rule that you always have? Shouldn't it always be an emphasis on those rules already set? And I think when you make an emphasis mm -hmm. every single year, then you go above and beyond maybe what's really out there. On the Week 10 marquee, normally we have teams that have made previous championship games. Yeah. We have teams that we are used to seeing up there. On the Week 10 marquee games of the week that we're going to discuss right now, you have Miami is at that, Detroit. Is that crazy? It's the truth, though. Is that a marquee game for you this week? It is this week. You think about how they're playing. And I think the key for Miami, Dan Marino is secretly working with Brian Tannehill. And if you watched him play over the last several games, he's thrown that ball well. I mean, he, he doesn't look like Dan Marino, but right. he's taking care of the football. The defense is number four scoring defense in the National Football League. They smoked Phillip Rivers. He couldn't breathe, it was embarrassing. essentially. It was embarrassing for the San Diego Chargers, but they're playing that much better. And then you talk about you talk about the Detroit Lions, the, the number one scoring defense in the National Football League this year. Which remember they just used to explode every year in games, and they're not doing it this year. Well, it, and the Lions are are six and two, having won a th uh, three quarters of their games without essentially Calvin Johnson yeah. being healthy. No Calvin Johnson, no Reggie Bush. And they still have won six games. Now they're coming off a bye with these guys presumably healthy and ready to go. This is a frightening proposition. And But both of these teams in previous years, previous incarnations, Rod Woodson, six and two lines, five and three Dolphins, just when you start believing them, they lay an egg in a game just like this. And I, the question is, is, is what type of game are we going to see? I, I don't think it's going to happen this year. You don't? I, I really don't. Because I look at the Dolphins, look like they finally turned that corner. You know, at the beginning of the year, they, they get a big win, and then they kind of stumble for a couple weeks. But I think they found their legs, and defensively was a key for them. Yes, Ryan Tannehill, he's coming around. It's a quarterback-driven league. He is coming around, but the defense has come around a great deal for him, and that's why they're winning games. And the Dolphins uh, are going to open up uh, week 11 on Thursday night football, eight days from now, against the Bills, which is a marquee game potentially for week number 11. Uh, and this normally, Dolphins lines would have been a sneaky good game, but they're not sneaking up on no, anybody they anymore. Are not. The, uh, another marquee game is the Sunday night contest. The Bears, this is must-win territory. Must win. It's always a must-win game, obviously, when the Bears and Packers play against one another, just right. for the rivalry and what it means for the fan bases in the, mm -hmm. of both of these teams. But at 3-5, and five, Bears falling 3-6, and six, even, even with the NFC in a somewhat down year, as it currently stands, right. you'd have to figure that's a wrap for the Chicago Bears if they don't win this game Sunday night. To me, this game for them, this is a this is a stack of cards. If they lose this one, it is all coming crumbling down. I think what they need to do, they need to take a note from the Dallas Cowboys, give them all, give the ball to your running back. Give the ball to Matt Forte, let him carry the ball, throw the ball to him in the passing game, take it out of Cutler's hands because that's when they struggle. Now, we know the defense has been not that good this year. Mm -hmm. It's just not that good this year. And 
they're playing against a team talking about Aaron, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. He can throw the football. Um, he can throw with the best of them. The defense has played solid. This is If they don't win this game, I just think the whole season for the uh, Chicago Bears come to crumbling down. And Aaron Rodgers coming off of uh, that tweaked hamstring. Apparently the bye week did him some good, and he's ready to roll in this game. He will also be on Thursday's edition of uh, the Rich Eisen Show, and we're going to be in Cincinnati. He'll be phoning into that program. Also on the marquee for week number 11, uh, week number 10, is two teams from last year's playoffs sitting there both at four and four. One team, the Saints, at four and four, looking great because that's where they are after starting 0 and 2. Mm -hmm. The other team, the 49ers, falling to four and four after a home loss against the Rams coming off of a bye. Um, who needs this one more in your estimation, Roderick? Rod Woodson. Well, right now it looks like the 49ers need it more because if you look at the New Orleans Saints, they won two marquee games back to back. Mm -hmm. You know, and going to Carolina, beat the Carolina Panthers. Uh, you know, they needed that game. But look at the 49ers. The way they lost that game this past week to the St. Louis Rams where he fumbles the football, he sacked eight times, he fumbles twice, and he fumbles going into the end zone to win the game. With seconds to go. With two seconds to go on the clocks. They need a win. Uh, and a road win against a very good football team will get them back on, on track. And... Um they're, even if the Saints somehow lose this game at home when they play better, I shouldn't say somehow because obviously there's many different ways, yes. certainly the way they played in September. If they lose this game, uh, it is possible at four and five they still lead the division by a game. I mean, what's going yes. on? And, and, and the 49ers at four and four, they're in third place right now. Arizona going into week 10, you think that is the best team in the NFL that you've seen through nine weeks? I do. I, I like Arizona. They played well. This is... Carson Palmer is playing like he did in 05 and 06 with Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. But this St. Louis Rams team, they've knocked off two NFC West teams back to back. They beat the they beat Seattle and then they beat the 49ers. So this is not going to be a cakewalk for the Arizona Cardinals. This team is playing a little bit better for some odd reason. They do have some weapons. Trey Mason has come to their feature back. He's a playmaker on that backside. You got Austin, the receiver. Uh, he, they can definitely get it done. And Robert Quinn, the first five weeks, didn't have a sack. Right. And he's found his legs. He's getting after the opposing quarterbacks the last couple of weeks. So uh, on the marquee, again, we've got um, the Niners and, and Saints. Yep. And then we've got the Bears and Packers. And then, oddly enough, the Dolphins and the Lions. The Miami Dolphins and the Detroit. What's going on, Rod? I, didn't, I would have never said that at the beginning of the year. But they are both playing solid football right Maybe now. Maybe Ryan Tannehill is going to play better because he won the week-to-week -week Player of the Week honors this week and is going to get That's a certificate right. from my mom. Uh, who, I, who might be available for, for calling into the show today. Maybe I get my mom to call in to the we show. You should. Well, I mean, if there's Brady, Favre, and Bledsoe, there's only one thing missing from this program. My mother. Your mom? My, well, I should call her my mother, <laughs> who's watching right now, probably, on her NFL Now app, Rod. It's a family how affair. Do you even put, I don't even know how to work that thing. What do you mean? The NFL Now well, stuff. Well, by the way, I can help you work that. That's you also like confusing. Said, you also said you were going to take a selfie yeah, in your Rich know, Eisen you know, show you know, gear and you know did, I did not. I wore it, and I left the stadium and said, oh, I forgot to take the selfie. That sounds like, it sounds like that story <laughs> you told on the previous show where you were late to a practice for Chuck Noll because your it's dog ate truth. your telephone. Now, all you got to do... Text Tom McCarthy. Uh -huh. I had the shirt on. A Hall of Famer. I had the shirt a, on. Somebody took a photo with you that day. Somebody has it. Tweet it to us if so. Yeah, Rod Woodson yeah. Hall of Famer is in store. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.